All right, so I uh, finally got my trippy cube resizing to work in virtual reality, so I can walk among, walk around amongst it. Uh, next is going to be setting up uh, selection detection of virtual reality controllers, and then the same thing with uh, flat screen interface. And my hopes for all of that is to have a series of algorithms uh, that are uh, changing the way that this array of cubes rotates and resizes that will lead players both in virtual reality and on a flat screen to realize there is one central goal or pattern to that point. Uh, and then I hope to pit flat screen players against VR players in races with uh, varying patterns with uh, different objects, cubes of different sizes, different behaviors in which they are all expanding and contracting or rotating or wiggling or animating in a variety of different ways that uh, lead one, lead the players to understand that there is one logical goal. Um, so that way players looking at the same reality from two different places uh, are just doing pattern recognition. And then I want to uh, do some uh, very fun, but hopefully also some fairly objective experience experiments in um, spatial perception and pattern perception in virtual reality and have a direct comparison to users on a flat screen. And then I want to use that to drive uh, some specific points in future asymmetrical virtual reality gaming projects and uh, experiences. So that's my current project. I think it's cool. Um, if you're interested, uh, I'll show you. It's a little bit more obvious, not in virtual reality, um, if you're not in virtual reality. So I'm going to close out of this project for right now, close out of VR. And then. Um, here's the simpler iteration of that same idea. Because um, showing somebody VR when they're not in VR doesn't make sense. So each of those cubes, the cubes are uh, five by five by five three-dimensional array. Stop with the VR. Why do you always have to run? So for a simple explanation, if I just have one floating actor, that floating actor is going to resize um, and rotate. It's rotating very, very slowly right now in a bunch of specific ways. Um, but that is just the one of them. If I spawn 125 of them, They all start small, they all get big, and then this one will get big and small slightly behind everything else. Uh, and if you look at the way that the wave moves, it's most obvious, I think, along this axis from this point of view. You can see this is biggest last and is smallest last. Um, so I'm going to set up a interface for users on a flat screen that they can navigate through and try to identify each goal cube based on sizing rotation. And then the way that that works uh, is in uh, Visual Studio in C++, I have a to do um, floating actor class that has a unique location rotation, uh, XYZ speed uh, that are all unique to each instance. And then each instance um, has a goal, um, and then uh, based on their distance from the goal, they are going to change their rotation or their scale, um, or a handful of other uh, goofy little algorithms that all operate slightly differently. From there, there is a spawner. Uh, which is just going to spawn uh, five by five by five, going from 
uh, negative two to positive two, including zero 200 centimeters apart into an array. Um, this will be widely variable eventually. There's going to be different array sizes. I will probably start with something as small as uh, two, four, or eight cubes, um, and then have um, different algorithms of uh, rolling, uh, spinning, wiggling, offset, uh, because each instance as it occurs um, when you begin play it can see what its location is what its rotation is and then can, it can set its own uh, random vectors and then i'm going to each level have a semi-randomized set of motion controls based on these uh, which will probably all scale and then get more complicated as it goes